welcome back to my channel. My name is Mina and this is Mirkwood Homestead and I talk a lot about plants and animals and show projects that I do around my little backyard farm. And today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite seed varieties that I have grown over the last several years and some new ones that I'm going to be growing this year that I'm super stoked to be growing. Let's start off with one from Baker Creek Seed. This is, I've only grown this one one time and I will say that while the flavor was not like amazing, this one was super fun to grow. It got huge and the plants were beautiful and the fruit was really pretty. It's the orange accordion tomato. I'll put up some pictures or videos of some of the ones that I was able to grow. I think it was the year before last. Get huge. Like, I think one of the biggest ones that I had was bigger than my face. They were almost kind of hollow inside. Not completely, but it, it would almost remind you of like a pepper. Like you could probably use these to stuff. Like they make, I think they make a specific type of tomato that you can stuff. Uh, and this would remind you of something like that but really big and it just makes your tomato basket super pretty i love the blue beauty tomato one and black cream they were very similar they've got dark shoulders this is caused by something called anthocyanin the more sun that they get the darker that they get and usually those darker tomatoes have a a more depth of flavor like kind of almost like a smoky or umami kind of flavor but you can see like some of these are super dark it's very similar to the black creme but they had plenty of fruit on them even in bad soil i was growing in some pretty crappy soil i just like a pretty tomato <laughs> so i'm working my way up to some of my favorites now this one was a free seed i did not purchased this. Actually, I think I ended up with two packs of these in my Baker Creek seed order. They were just beautiful. This is a super interesting looking one. It's, I might be pronouncing this wrong, but it's the white Thomasol. Very, very mild. Like, not very acidic, not very sweet. Again, the flavor was a little lacking, but it was super pretty. I've never seen a tomato that is this color. There might be other white tomato varieties out there that have better flavor than this one, but to get this one free in the mail and have a couple plants was really cool. The next is a classic. This is a big beefsteak tomato. It's a German pink. It's kind of similar to a like a pink brandy wine tomato. Amazing flavor. These big beefsteak tomatoes, these big heirloom beefsteak tomatoes are going to pack a punch with flavor and these absolutely did that for me. And the fruit just gets giant. Next is a cherry tomato. Um, I don't like these so easy seeds. I don't think that they germinate as well because they have a coating on them. Uh, some people like to be able to see and uh, and get a feel for the seeds better than the, I just I don't like I don't like the coating that they come that comes on them. The chocolate cherry tomatoes are really really sweet. I, I did have an issue with these cracking a lot with the rain. There was one I don't have the seed packet because I believe that the seeds were gifted to me. I had a green tomato. I don't, I think it might have been a green grape tomato. So it was similar to a cherry tomato, but just slightly bigger. Those were delicious. With uh, green tomatoes, it's difficult to know when they're ripe and <laughs> when you need to pick them. What I've experienced in recent years growing green tomatoes is that they are super, super flavorful. Now, I'm not talking about green tomatoes as in you go and get one off the vine before it turns red and you fry it. These are actually green whenever they're ripe. And you have to go up and fill the tomato to see when you're supposed to be picking it. I, I don't have the seed packet here, but I wanted to uh, mention I had a green... Actually, I might have ordered some of the seeds. I gotta flip, Let me flip back through here and see... I had a green, I think it was Cherokee tomato last year. 
or the year before that and they were delicious I don't but I did save the seeds from those green tomatoes I specifically remember eating a salad and having one of the green tomatoes and one of the white Thomas all tomatoes side by side and the flavor comparison was just out of this world different the white tomato was very mild and bland for somebody who doesn't like a whole lot of flavor I mean maybe that's something that you would want uh, but as a tomato lover <laughs> You really want that tomato that really packs a punch. So I really suggest the green tomatoes if you've never tried them before and you're wanting some sort of interesting fruit to add to your garden. Those were delicious. And next on my list is the Rutger tomato. I love these because these are my grandfather's favorite. He, anytime he grows tomatoes, he wants these. They produce a ton. These are indeterminate, but I do believe that they have determinate Rutger varieties. This is a smaller tomato. Like, it's not like a beefsteak tomato. It's more like this. But they make a really great canning tomato. This is a great, like, all-around juice, sauce, slicing, anything you need it for. Speaking of sauce tomatoes, I really like the Amish paste. I think I'm going to try my hand at San Marzano's again. There were or aroma. There was one year when they just did not do well for me when these kicked their butt. Like th this is the one of the biggest paste tomatoes that I have grown. I mean, they get huge. Not like your average paste tomato, your average like Roma or San Marzano would be about that. Like they could get giant. What's the difference in like a paste tomato and a regular tomato is this is going to have more flesh. It's not going to have as many seeds. Paste tomatoes are really great for making sauces and paste obviously because they're not going to have as much water inside of them. This is probably one of my new favorites. This is called the Golden King of Siberia. So it says that it's like a heart shaped. The the meatiest tomato like you cut it open I saved seeds from it and there were hardly any seeds inside of this tomato and the flavor this was one of the most flavorful tomatoes that I grew last year if you're looking for a really flavorful tomato that is also going to have a lot of flesh that's going to be good for canning I highly suggest this one it it had quite a few uh, fruits on it too and they get huge Next up is the Jubilee, another classic. This is a yellow tomato. It's also going to be kind of on the smaller side. This is a great all-around tomato. It makes super flavorful juice. It is also one of my grandfather's favorites. And you know if the old timers are growing it, it's going to be good. <laughs> but year after year, he says that this one makes the best sauce. Or not sauce, sorry, the best juice. It's very sweet and not super acidic. Next is the Japanese black trifel tomato. This is also an indeterminate variety. These just taste amazing. They also have kind of like a smoky flavor. They're like a pear shape, so they're kind of on, also on the smaller side, but really great flavor. I love these. And then finally, the best tomato that I've ever had is a Paul Robeson tomato. This is one of those dark and umami this specific packet says that it is a smoky, earthy flavor, and I would agree with that. This one is full of flavor, like super complex. So those are my favorites that I have in seed packets right now. The one that I have grown before that I do not have the pack for, I probably have an image, I'll put it up here now, is one that I got off of Etsy, I believe, and it was called the Sergeant Pepper Tomato. And it's a heart-shaped tomato with the dark shoulders, very similar to like the Black Creme or the Blue Beauty, and it is shaped like a heart. They were all, I mean, just beautiful. Average tomato flavor, but just the prettiest thing. If you want something to make your tomato basket pop, that one definitely stands out. Not just because of the name, not just because I'm a Beatles fan. So now let's talk about the new varieties that I've not tried and I'm going to be growing this year. I wanted to show you guys what I've decided that I'm going to store my seeds in. Next year, I think I'm going to get something a little bit different, something that might not 
be so easily smushed because I don't want to damage the seeds, but this keeps it's going to keep them drier than or and more definitely more organized. That was my issue was <laughs> organization, just having them all thrown in a bin or something and having the seeds fall out. But this is just a binder and then I have four by six photo inserts here and you can just flip through them and see what you got. This has been super handy. I really like this method of storage for seeds. So I made another video pretty similar to this one going through my seeds. It was like all of my seeds that I had bought. So I won't go into too much detail about these. All of these cherry tomatoes, the red centiflor, because if you've ever seen a picture of these, they, I mean, they call it Cinderflor because thousands, it's gonna have a bunch on it. The Isis Candy Cherry, it is beautiful and looked delicious. This was my free seed that I was actually gonna buy, the Spoon Tomato. And I hope that you guys follow along with my videos because I really wanna see how this turns out and you'll be able to also. The Berry's Crazy Cherry, again, I think the, uh, quantity of the tomatoes in the photograph got me. The one of the most popular seeds on Baker Creek is the Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato and the Sun Gold Select which I've been reading has amazing flavor. Those are the ch the cherries that I'm the most excited about. Uh, the Wops Pinnacan Peach. It's a fuzzy tomato. It's supposed to be super sweet. The Abe Lincoln tomato, which supposedly has, an, it's another one of those really super flavorful tomatoes that has a really depth, of, good depth of flavor. The triple crop, just like it says, it's got, it's supposed to be super prolific. This, also called a pineapple tomato, it's another green variety. And like I said before, the green varieties that I've grown over the years have just been the most flavorful. Those are the ones that, that I can't wait to try. I was looking through my seeds and noticed that I don't have a lot of determinant varieties of tomatoes. Most of them are indeterminate and I wanted to touch on that. The indeterminate varieties means that they're going to keep growing until they die. They're going to keep growing until they either get sick and get blight or until the frost hits. They can get, I mean, just way taller than you <laughs> as long as you are tying them up so they are going to be one that is gonna have to be staked or trained up a trellis or a string or something. Determinant means that the number of tomatoes is almost determined. The height is most definitely determined. Uh, you will be able to grow those better like say in a pot or in a raised garden, something that it's almost pre-planned for you. You're, you're, it's it's not going to go super crazy. Uh, determinate varieties, you don't really need to prune. Um, pruning determinate varieties can sometimes uh, lead to less fruit, whereas indeterminate varieties uh, definitely benefit from some pruning. If you have just one or two liters going up to set fruit, an indeterminate variety uh, if you let it just grow on the ground, it's going to grow out like a vine and it's going to put out roots everywhere and it's going to make just tons and tons. You can try and experiment if you have a, a spot in your garden where you want to let a tomato go crazy. The only issue with that is, well, it's going to be hard to weed for one. <laughs> for two, if you let it get too bushy and touch the ground, that's going to lead to disease. If you don't have the proper airflow and if it rains and you get dirt coming up on your plant, that's going to introduce all kinds of fungus and bacteria and stuff that is going to kill your plant and make your plant sick. So it is best to stake and train your tomato to go up and tie it up and to also prune. That way you have proper airflow. If you have a high tunnel or if you plan on getting something like a high tunnel, tomatoes do way better in high tunnels because they, um, they benefit from bottom watering. If you water from the top and you get those leaves wet, that's going to also cause like fungus. And they just, they don't like to be wet. That introduces a lot of bad stuff. So bottom watering your tomatoes is important. If you don't have a high tunnel, I don't have a high tunnel, starting them out in something like a bottom watering tray will help them get out on the right foot. 
and on the days when you don't have rain in the forecast and you have to water them water them at the base don't don't spray the leaves with water some tomato projects that i'm looking forward to this year is if i get a whole lot of cherry sized tomatoes i want to try to ferment tomatoes again i've fermented them in the past they were good they were odd it was almost like they were fizzy <laughs> i want to attempt that again it's been several years definitely canning i've noticed that if i make salt if i can salsa and stuff i'm less apt to eat that than i would be to say cook like a can of whole tomatoes and last year i made most of my tomatoes that i got into salsa and i've recently developed kind of a onion allergy <laughs> so i won't be doing that this year i really want to can a lot of basics that way they're versatile like i can take a can of whole tomatoes and put it in a pot and immersion blend it and make a sauce a million things that you can do with canned tomatoes you wouldn't even have to make just plain tomato sauce if you had a whole a can of whole tomatoes you could do anything with it definitely suggest doing the freezing method if you have a lot of tomato plants that aren't necessarily fruiting at the same time or they're you know weeks out and you don't have a big pile on your counter ready to be canned or maybe you have too many and you don't have the time to can it. Score them and throw them in a freezer bag and freeze them. You score them and core them, throw them in a freezer bag and freeze them until you're ready to use them. And you can have a whole freezer of tomatoes. And when fall rolls around, you're able to do the canning that you have more time to do then. Seed saving is going to be another thing that I'm going to put more energy into. Get those little jewelry bags and try to save as many seeds as I can. I just wanted to make a quick video and show you some of the seeds and some of the, my favorite ones that I've grown over the years. And I was hoping that maybe you could comment down below and let me know what your absolute favorite tomatoes that you have grown or tasted over the years because maybe that's something that I would want to add to my future garden growing list. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to log off and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.